Honourable Members, last night the Parliament of the United Kingdom voted by a massive majority against the agreement negotiated with the European Union over the last two years. We take note of that vote, albeit with a degree of regret, but we respect the, uh, the view of the majority represented in the House of Commons. We need to interpret this vote in the right way. It's not so much these uh, 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 it's not that um, the forces who voted against were on the same wavelength. There were those who, who want uh, close links with the European Union in the future, for example, via a customs union. It's too early to analyse the consequences of the vote, but we're certainly not looking at the no-deal scenario. There was no majority in Westminster for that idea either. The fact remains there are two negative majorities in Westminster, one against the agreement and one against the prospect of the United Kingdom withdrawing from the European Union without agreement, but there's no positive majority there. We therefore trust that a start can be made to work which will ensure that as fast as possible we can find a, a shared solution and we look to discover how the British government intends to proceed. We have ambitions for our future relationship with the United Kingdom. Let us trust that, that the British government will also be ambitious and revisit the red lines it set. The European Parliament has full faith in our negotiator, Michel Barnier, who, in a moderate, in, in, intelligent and wise way, oversaw the negotiations with the United Kingdom. If it proves impossible to raise the level of ambition, we would face the prospect of uh, a no deal, which would uh, be a lose situation for everyone. We need to prepare for the prospect of the UK leaving without an agreement. I think it's only right and proper, and this is the position of the European Parliament. to focus, first of all, on the citizens of the uh, European Union living in the United Kingdom and British citizens uh, living in the rest of Europe, because they are suffering from uncertainty and they would be the first victims of a disorderly withdrawal of the United Kingdom. We will continue closely to follow uh, proposals on the Irish issue also. We must ensure that the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland is a flexible one, while upholding uh, the health of uh, European farming and industry. We must, of course, in pursuit of this, retain the unity amongst the member states that we have managed to build up over the, uh, the course of these long and difficult negotiations. That unity shows that at difficult times the European Union is really there and is in a position to adopt a cohesive political position.